The Negro Leagues Baseball Museum was established in 1990 in a tiny one-room office inside the historic Lincoln Building where legends like the great Buck O'Neill and other former Negro Leaguers who were still with us at that time literally took turns paying the monthly rent to keep that little office open and of course with it our hopes and dreams of one day building a facility that would pay rightful tribute not only to one of the greatest chapters in baseball history but what now thousands of visitors from around the world discover one of the greatest chapters in American history and that is the rich and compelling and inspirational story of the Negro Leagues a story whose origins began right here in Kansas City 1920 when Andrew Roop Foster led a contingent of eight independent black baseball team owners into Kansas City. They met at the Paseo YMCA, just right around the corner from where the Negro League Baseball Museum operates today. And out of that meeting came the birth of the Negro National League, the first successful organized black baseball league. The Negro Leagues would then go on to operate remarkably for 40 years from 1920 until 1960. And as you could well imagine, that surprises most of the people who come to visit the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum because most come with at least a basic understanding that Jackie Robinson would break baseball's color barrier in 1947. And I do think the consensus is if, well, if Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier in 1947, if there was a Negro Leagues, surely it must have ended in and around that time. Well, the leagues would operate for another 13 years. Why? Because it took Major League Baseball 12 years before every Major League team had at least one black baseball player. The Boston Red Sox would become the last team to integrate in 1959 when they signed a player by the name of Elijah Pumpsy Green. That would complete the integration cycle by 1960 the Negro League ceased operations because by then the best young black stars had moved into the major leagues or into their minor league system and there was no replenishing system, so the leagues would then dissolve. The story is all brought to life here at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum in Kansas City, Missouri. Here recently, we were so fortunate to have Major League Baseball announce the insertion of adding Negro League stats to Major League stats. And what it does is gets baseball fans and the history of our sport inserted into the present today. Um, we've seen a lot from the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum with the Tip Your Cat, having four sitting presidents across our country, um, athletes, activists, community leaders across the country to pay their homage and respect to the Negro Leagues. We've seen it here in Kansas City where we recently announced the T-Bones uh, now changing their names to the Kansas City Monarchs with a long-term partnership and licensee agreement here with the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. That gives us an opportunity not only in Kansas City um, but across the country to bring back Negro Leagues heritage we have an opportunity this year in 2021 and moving forward to not only bridge the present with the past, but also amplify the history of the Negro Leagues and introduce this concept of civil rights told through the lens of baseball to a new era and a new generation.